Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Luz uh, Cabrales. I am the co-founder of the Independent Film Creative Hub, as well as Scranton Films. And hey, everyone. Thanks for joining us for another episode of Scranton Talks. My name is Desiree. I'm also the co-founder of the Independent Film Creative Hub, as well as the founder of NEPA Film Society, and as well as the organizer of the Mystery Box Film Challenge. And we're so glad to have you here with us. And we are very excited to bring you Scranton Talks through all our social media platforms and through our independent Creative Hub network. So make sure you sign up on ourcreativehub.com to stay up to date on local projects, connect with local filmmakers and collaborate on projects together. This community is for you and only you can help us grow. So sign up today, it's free and super easy. Yes, yes, we are super excited because we had quite a few talks uh, in the month of May, uh, and it was had a lot. <laughs> it was pretty hectic. Uh, I'm sorry, in the month of April, that was April, and a little bit of May, we had the May Fourth uh, special with Daniel Robach, uh, which we had a, a couple of. Uh, uh, lucky fans to talk with him as well about Star Wars and his involvement in the new video game, right? That's yeah, right. we did. Yeah, we did. That was a great. That was a great episode. Yeah, that was really exciting for Desiree mostly because she's like a true fan. <laughs> as you can tell, him. back here it's Star Wars Day every day back here. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I can take it or leave it, but I do appreciate Star Wars. But uh, it was pretty cool just being able to talk to Daniel and um, for him to be available and speak with all of us filmmakers and inspire. Uh, he's from the Bethlehem area, so that yeah. was pretty good too as well. Seeing that uh, a local uh, celebrity you know, was able to come and um, share his story with us. Uh, I got pretty inspired. How about you, Desiree? Yeah, he's such a wonderful down to earth uh, gentleman. And it was so inspiring. And everything he said, if you like go on our YouTube channel on the pod and mm -hmm. the podcast audio will be dropping soon. Um, I'm going to have it drop with the, the release date of the first Star Wars on May 25th. So Oh, I'm planning that. that, but it's not oh, on our uh, podcast yet, but I will get it on there. But it's on uh, the YouTube uh, channel. A true fan. I had to break it down into three parts because it was so long. I think we were uh, on live for like an hour and a half. Or, yeah. Yeah. But you all had fun. I had fun. So uh, it was it was really nice. And, and we're very excited that you're all here again uh, in supporting this uh, this mission of us bringing film back to the Scranton area and getting a lot of top uh, people in filmmakers and creatives uh, willing to share their story and just how they got to where they are right now. And um, even if they're just starting or they're veterans in it. Uh, yeah. So I'll let Desiree uh, introduce our next uh, filmmakers, producers uh, that we have uh, for you today. Yeah, it's my pleasure to introduce our guests for today. They are four talented producers of The Libby Show. We have Beth Breyer, Masalina Morley, Ileana Gibbert, Suzanne Ortiz curry Yes, uh, thank you so much. So uh, again, I'm doing this as well at the same time. So just bear with me as far as uh, uh, we, we're having a little bit of technical difficulties, but uh, we'll make sure that uh, it goes pretty smooth. Uh, again, so let me, I'm going to introduce you, uh, the ladies. We're going to talk about just their independent journey in just the Libby show as well. Uh, they are producers, they are actresses, they're models. Uh, we have a uh, quite a few variety to talk about and inspire somebody. Uh, but the Livy Show as well is, is, is an online talk show that really is about inspiring and celebrating women of a certain age. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're very excited to be bringing that to you and for them to talk about just the, why are they doing this show yeah. and what the, the mission is. Um, so uh, I'm about to bring them in uh, right now. So give me one second. We're gonna have Suzanne. Hi, Suzanne. Hi. Uh, we have Beth and we have Messalina. Uh, Ilian is having a little bit of uh, difficulties right now, but she'll come back uh, on the stream in a few minutes. Uh, we'll get her in and we'll get uh, her to share her story. Yes. Uh, ladies, thank you so much for being here. Uh, just make sure you unmute yourself um, wh uh, when you're ready to talk. But uh, again, thank you so much. We, we couldn't do yeah. this without you. So, Thanks so much. Uh, I really appreciate it. Uh, I, hi, Messalina. I have you. Uh... Hi, it's great to be here. Thank you. Thank you, Suzanne. Thank you so much. I think uh, tr try uh, clicking on that mute uh, button again, because uh, I think you're muted. Give me, just click on it again. Perfect. There, there you go. You'll nice. be able to speak. 
You can hear me now? Yes. <laughs> yeah, we can hear okay. you. <laughs> Thank you so much. I don't know what it is about. What what is it? Today is uh, Thursday. There's just so many like uh, things glitches on Facebook right now. So I hope it doesn't interfere our our connection. But we'll wait for Ileana when it's um when she comes in. That's the beauty of uh you know being connected. But it's also you know you can get very technical. So mm -hmm. thank you so much for your patience. Oh here here we have Ileana. Hi, how yes. are you? <laughs> Uh, so she, we'll let her uh, this uh, just connect and make sure that she's all set to go. Um, but Suzanne, let's um, let's dive in into talking to you just about uh, what you've been doing. Um, Desiree will do a quick introduction on what you've been doing, and se same with Messalina and Eliana and Beth, and then we'll get in into just uh, putting you on the spot and asking <laughs> you some questions. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, just to give our audience some background on these lovely ladies, Suzanne has owned a PR firm since 1998, 10 years ago through an entertainment client. She started her second career as an independent film series and podcast producer specializing in marketing them. Her more than 20 projects have won awards at top film festivals and have been nominated for daytime Emmy Awards, Indie Series Awards, and others. Other projects have included actors who have won Oscars and Tony Awards. The projects have been seen on most streamers, including HBO, Lifetime, Showtime, and in theaters. Suzanne is also a founding member of Rebel Media, which is premiering Mr. Malcolm's List in July, and her workbook on marketing independent films will be out this year. Uh, Messalina is an actress and screenwriter. Most recently, she played Revlon in the American premiere of The Revlon Girl by Neil Anthony Docking. Previously, she worked on TV shows such as The Other F Word, Amazon Amazon Style Code Live, as well as voiceover work for Google. Messalina is a fashion model with state management and has been working with magazines and brands such as Allure, Stylecaster, Banana Republic, Target, and walked on New York's, New York's Fashion Week for Skims and Eleven Honoré, among others. Ileana is a graduate of New York, you know, NYU's Tisch School of the Arts and trained at the Lee Strasberg Theater Institute, took a career detour, spending her early careers, her early years in the corporate sector, getting business skills. She now applies to her work as an actress and expanding into writing, producing, and directing. And finally, last but not least, Beth is a lawyer, crossword enthusiast, and yet undiscovered screenwriter, as well as an avid fan of rom-com movies and 70s and 80s TV. Beth and her husband, Bruce, are parents of two grown children and a naughty but adorable rescue cat, all of whom say she is very bossy. In her next life, Beth hopes to be tall. <laughs> <laughs> but welcome, ladies, to Scranton Talks. We're so glad to have you. Yes, thank you so much. Uh, I wish I could be tall as well. You know, maybe in my next life. <laughs> Can I just that say, if you're super tall, you don't want to be tall. Oh, right. Okay. You but are very tall. tall. You, it, it's so annoying. You can't wear heels. You're always like, look, like it's just like, hmm. it's, Trust me, I would much rather be a bit shorter. Okay, all right. I'll <laughs> think about, about it. It's though. all about perspective. <laughs> yeah, when you can't reach, uh, you know, those objects, right? <laughs> yeah, but, but like uh, you can get a stool for that. But like when you're stuck in a plane and you don't have extra leg room, you can't like chop your feet off. So you are right. I was yeah. just coming back from uh, Texas, and yeah, those they're not meant for uh, tall people. That's for sure. <laughs> for anybody. <laughs> exactly. Uh, very cool. Well, thank you so much, Ileana. We can see you. Uh, I think we can hear you. Um, we were just, uh, uh, you saw the introductions. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start with Suzanne. And then we're going to go down the line uh, just uh, to talk a little bit about yourselves. Uh, I know Suzanne uh, personally for a, well, quite a few years. She's definitely a mentor uh, as far as getting me uh, networking, networking with other filmmakers, networking with other people. I met her at the uh, on LinkedIn, actually. Uh, I sent her a message because she was uh, doing stuff for women uh, and just to empower women uh, in filmmaking. And then um, one thing like to another, I was at the Richwood Film Festival, then we met in person. Uh, and now uh, I get to help her out with this show as well by editing her show. Um, but let's talk about your early career and just what... Um, 
what got you first into the filmmaking industry, television? Uh, I know you own a, a PR firm and you do a lot of uh, work as a producer. Uh, you worked on uh, quite a few independent films that have made it uh, to win awards, as well as Netflix, uh, you know, Hulu. Uh, so I do a lot of talking, but I'm going to let you just talk a little bit about that, how you got started, what got you into this whole industry. Sure. Well, thank you, Luz. Thank you for having all of us on. Mm -hmm. And thank you for your work in being our editor for the Libby Show Lunch with the Ladies. We really appreciate that. You give it the look that we want. And I appreciate your words about um, calling me a mentor because I do strive for that. And I also do like to network and connect people because I think that is the way to accomplish anything. Um, in fact, my whole career in producing is from networking and connections. And I always say, if a door opens, don't go peek inside. You could always close it and go, go away, but always look inside. I mean, I've been doing public relations since, since I was in college a really long time. And then I had an entertainment client. Um, a couple of them approached me for some, it was a winner of a reality show, approached me to do some PR and then after someone heard I did that, then another reality person came along. And then um, just one thing kind of snowballed. I was working very closely with this uh, Emmy winning actress. She started producing something and I said, oh, that looks pretty cool. How do I do that? What do I do? Um, and that's how I got from public relations to producing. But I also find, and I know you have a lot of filmmakers listening in, I also find that the two of them are so correlated because when you make a film, especially now with the way the industry is and the way the streamers have killed the old distribution model and revenue making money, uh, revenue model for making money with independent films, you really need to know your demographics or at least know where you expect that film to land. Um, I've been fortunate enough that I, uh, I've, I've worked on a lot of movies. Uh, my first one that I was, the first big one I worked on got into Sundance and then we were bought by Sony Pictures Classics. Um, I've had other movies, um, Egg, um, Ex An Acceptable Loss with Jamie Lee Curtis in it. Um, you can find that in places. Another one, A Case of Blue. I have one called Lost Girls that we just got on Lifetime. And um, there's a bunch of them. and each one has a different journey and you just don't know where they will land. But I will tell you, if you are focused in on who your audience is and you focus in on the platform that reaches that audience, that's your best bet of getting visibility and success for your project. Oh, no, that, that's great that you mentioned that, because I think um, a lot of filmmakers, you know, don't realize that filmmaking is a business, right? And you mm -hmm. also have to sell yourself in a way that you have to showcase uh, what you can do sometimes more than the project. So what mm -hmm. what do you think um, you will say, like, that was like perfect, uh, just the way you, you put it there. What do you think you're the most challenging part as a producer in PR, like so making that switch, and you still are in PR, so just making that switch, yeah. like you say, they but uh, maybe what do you think that that was for you? Well, you know, I, I've done PR for a long time, and I've done a lot of boring PR. I mean, you know, I had a foam, a client that made foam, and I had to make that interesting, so I uh -huh. think having now a content that I enjoy working with, so it's still promoting um a, a product it's just that that product now is entertainment so that makes it a whole lot more interesting especially when i gravitate towards entertainment that is my go-to during the pandemic entertainment was my go-to to make me feel better um so mm -hmm. it it goes hand in hand and also with um above the line producing where you're also making decisions on finding sales agents and casting and things like that. That's all public relations also, because you're trying to make a product look really good. And so you're looking at each, each actor as to, unfortunately, what their socials are, how popular they are, can they help your film in the end? So these are all things that we would do when selling a product that now gets applied to making a movie or a series or a podcast. So as a PR, um, you look into, like, let's say you're helping someone, right, uh, to just get better at what they're doing, maybe have a better image. Um, what do you think about all this social media and, like, just how to present yourself uh, there uh, and how you will tell somebody, you know, like, 
that everything really matters that is out there, right? It does. It does. And social media, I don't get on Facebook as often as I should because I do it for my business. Uh, so it's a job to me. But unfortunately, social media isn't going away. The best advice I can give, and I used to give this to any client, is just pick two that you you can really master because sometimes I think if you don't have a lot of followers and don't have a lot of engagement on one, even though if you have five, it's better to be really successful on a few of them. And I would even say one or two because to engage properly and post properly, let's say you're doing Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and then if you wanna go on TikTok, um, or Snapchat or whatever you're using, and there's there's more coming down the pike. Focus in on which one hits your demographics. If you're looking for older people, you might want to go to Facebook. If you were looking for younger, broader people, Instagram. But just pick, pick. I would say even pick one and just be fantastic at that. Very cool. Well, Good thank advice. you so much for that, Suzanne. I'll let uh, Desiree, I know she uh, had the next question for Messalina. Yeah, so this one's going to Messalina. Uh, you are an actress and a model. Tell us about how you got started and what do you love most about the two crafts? Okay, uh, so as a model, I kind of actually started as a baby. Um, I was seen in a stroller and yeah. by a photographer and he asked my mom if he could take some like baby modeling photos and he sent them into an agency and i then got a baby modeling agent and i was in the first uk babies r us catalog and oh, wow. then i moved to america and it stopped <laughs> <laughs> i was a I, I had a similar experience happen when i was a kid as a model i was walking in New York with my sister and a photographer came up to my parents and said, can I photograph your daughters? Um, I, I become, I'm a photographer and I'm, and um, again, they submitted the photos this time to Wilhelmina. And so my sister and I ended up signing and so we were, became child models. Oh, and that worked for a bit till I started losing my teeth and like became that awkward size and then it was like not gonna happen for a while. And I didn't think much more of it until I was strongly pursuing acting. And when I was 10, I was in a play with my mother and I got to do the scene where I was dealing with my parents getting a divorce. And so it was a really needy uh, mm -hmm. scene to deal with for a 10, most 10 year olds don't get a scene like that to, to, to play. And I was like, wow, this is amazing. If I could just do this for the rest of my life, I'd be so happy. And so I, that was kind of my moment of like, I, I, that's what I want to do. And when That's, I was, when I was, about, yeah, it was, it was amazing. It was like, it was, I, felt, I just like this amazing moment. And so when I was in my, the summer before my last year of high school, I did this acting and modeling competition. And my goal was just to, to go in for acting, but the people who like uh, brought me recommended that I did some of the modeling stuff just so I'd be seen more by different agents and managers and things. Okay. And they said, uh, and so I did it, and then I actually ended up with a modeling agent, <laughs> and so oh, wow. that, and so, and it was so it wasn't even intentional that like so the modeling I just I, I say I fell into it every time, and I love it. It's amazing, and I'm I'm so grateful. And then I've and I continue the acting as well, but yeah. So it's just been one of those things. Or one I just knew it was right, and I've pursued it always. And the other, it's just kind of been a happy accident that I'm so grateful for. That's very yeah, cool. That's, that's, that's quite a journey, actually. That's that's really nice. Um, for for the acting and, and the modeling, um, do you like one more than the other? Like, uh, or is it just completely two completely different things that just kind of come together? They they are very different things and so and there's great bits and not so great bits about both because i mean you have to sit around sometimes on set that can be annoying but you, yeah you, you that's a great time to learn your lines and make sure you you know everything and uh sometimes you when you're putting on your 30th outfit for a photo shoot you're like really another another dress like, <laughs> but then but you know what then you see the photos afterwards you're like oh my goodness that was so worth it and so I, I love both. They are so different and I just have to be grateful for every chance I get to do either of them because I, I know I'm very lucky and blessed and it's just an amazing thing to do. Oh, yeah, thank great. you so much for sharing that. I did put your uh, website on the screen so uh, people can see you know, the work that you have done and uh, just uh, the modeling uh, in everything there. And I know you're working on your website a little more, but I, I thought it was beautiful. So oh, great. Uh, 
Yeah, it looks really nice. Um, so I know you also have a hard stop. So at any time, if you need to leave, you just let me know. And um, that's no problem at all, okay? So we're not going to keep you a hostage here. But uh, <laughs> I know we started a little late, so I apologize. Uh, but uh, now I'm going to uh, go to Ileana. Um, Ileana, I have seen your IMDb, and I was like, oh, my goodness, like, this lady has been everywhere, right? So I have seen that you... Um, let me see. I, I know I have it here that you have been in Line Order, Special Victims Unit, uh, Blue Blood, Bloods, uh, Quantico, and, and quite a lot more independent films, and even a short film that you have, I, I believe, produced, correct? Um, tell me a little bit about that and just sort of how you first started in acting, like getting into the, the, the industry. Yeah, well, it actually came very late for me. Um, it's something that I always had a love for and an interest, but I was painfully shy as a child and as a young person, and so I didn't pursue it. Um, really, my parents didn't know anything about the industry, I'm first generation Cuban. Um, so, you know, my family thought you're supposed to be a teacher and you're supposed to or, you know, be a doctor or a nurse. They didn't mm -hmm. think about the industry. So I went ahead and I went the corporate world where I was most mm -hmm. of my life until a few years ago when we had some layoffs and I thought, well, I could either just go work for one of my competitors, which I was ready to do, or I could do something else. I could prevent myself at this you know, stage of my life just to try to do. And if it doesn't work, I can always go back to you know, running a sales team or being a salesperson. Um, and so I really have not looked back these years. I am loving what I'm doing. It's a big learning experience because there was a lot to learn and, and I had a lot of catching up to do, but I am fascinated by the industry. I have a great love and passion for it. I love theater. I love film and television, um, but I'm also very interested in what goes on behind the scenes. So I started getting, mm -hmm. you know, started to dabble there and I thought, well, nobody's going to hire me or just you know, let me work on their film experience. So let's let me just do my own. And so that's what prompted me to do the first one, which is called Twice Upon a Time. Actually, if you do Twice Upon a Time 9 11, is it about a 9 11 widow? Um, you'll find it. Or if okay. you I, I, okay. my name, I'm gonna put it here. There. Twice Upon a Time, you said correct. I'm yes. sorry about that. Okay, yes. I'm gonna put it right here. Uh, and this is, uh, you, you, you can view this on YouTube? Yes, on YouTube. But if you do Twice Upon a Time on 11, you'll find it because there's more than one. Okay. Oh, okay, great. Uh, we were, you were cutting off a little bit, so I apologize maybe if you get a little closer to the microphone. Uh, my apologies. But I know that uh, just to make sure that we didn't miss anything, um, you're of Cuban descent, correct? Yeah. yeah. And, and you were, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, first generation. And, so my parents really didn't know anything about the entertainment industry. So I really went off and did corp went and worked in the corporate sector. But when I got laid off about I guess now eight years ago, I decided to pursue something different. I could have just taken a job with another competitor and I was ready to do that. But I thought, you know, this is a blessing in disguise. Let me try something new. And so I said, well, I've always had a passion for the entertainment industry. So let me start in front of the camera. So I started, you know, trying to get auditions and, you know, looking at backstage and looking at other outlets and, you know, joining the unions and getting jobs here and there. And one thing just led to another and one job propels the next and propels the next. And you start networking, you start cultivating relationships and learning about the industry and being a sponge every single day. And, um, and now I have really another interest, which is what goes on behind the scenes which is what then made me do twice on it and, and produce it. That's wow, really that's great. great. And just the way that you say that, you know, it didn't necessarily come to you early as far as acting. Uh, that oh, really yeah. does inspire other, uh, other people and other actresses that yeah. may want to pursue uh, this, uh, this field. So thank you so much for that. Sure. Definitely. Uh, and then now, um, we're going to go to Beth. Uh, Beth has an interesting background, so I'm going to have Desiree uh, go go with that. Yeah, Beth, uh, we found that you're a lawyer. So yes. what got you interested in the film industry as well, since you're from the, the law background? 
Well, like the, my other co-hosts, at the time I was very little, I really wanted to be an actress. I wanted to be a stage actress. And my parents said, oh, that's fine, until it really came time to go to school and study. And then they said, um, uh, my dad was a doctor, my mom was a lawyer, and they said, well, choose one. <laughs> and I didn't have the aptitude or the fortitude to be a doctor, so I went to law school because that was the choice I was given. Um, I have two sisters. One is a doctor and the other one is a lawyer. And so you could see we were very limited. Um, I still have my license, though I am not actively practicing at the moment. Um, several years ago, it's about seven years ago, I was doing one of my favorite things, which is watching TV with my family. Um, and we were watching, we were changing the channels and we said, you know, there has to be something on, something else. We had seen a lot of um, police dramas, which are, are excellent. We had seen a lot of um, medical uh, dramas, which I have to watch like this because I don't have the fortitude, as I mentioned. And and I, whenever they, they turned on any of the legal shows, my stomach would just go, oh. Um, and so I said, you know what? I, I don't know why we're not finding something new. And at this time, our kids were in college and they were calling me every night with these great stories. And you would think of the term university, it's a small world, right? That's what it is. It's a universe of people. And they would tell me these stories. And I thought, I, I don't understand why nobody is telling these stories on television in the form of a drama. And so I said to my husband, I'm going to sit down and write one. And I didn't know very much about it at all. Um, like we've, we've heard other people say, I went out and I spoke to people who wrote. I didn't know the first thing. I, I didn't know if I should write it on a legal pad. And they said, no, no, you need, you need a platform, a format. And, um, and I wrote it. I wrote a pilot, um, basically based in the university. And, um, wow. I talked about, I met with several people. Really, nobody took a lot of serious interest until I met Suzanne. Um, in the ladies' room <laughs> and at the introduction of a conference where she was speaking. And she called me um, a few weeks later and said, you know, let, let's talk about this. Um, and it's still a, a project of mine. It's an ongoing project. It's a passion of mine. And since then, there are other, other shows that I want to see. And I mm -hmm. sketch them out, and some of them are writing now. Uh, but it was really a personal desire to see something more on television. Very cool. Yeah, it's great. Well, that's actually a pretty good setup. I think I think you planned that, Ben. That's a pretty <laughs> yeah. good setup to say, you know, to watch something different on television. Mm -hmm. And that's where we're going to go into the Livy show. Uh, Mesa, I know we have five minutes for you, uh, but I, I promise I'll be quick on this. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show the promo uh, for the Libby show. And this is a project that you are all part of your old producer host, uh, making this happen, um, for women out there and women of a certain age that may, um, get overlooked in the industry. Right. So let me just pull that up and then we'll talk a little bit more about, um, just the mission of the show and, and where we can watch and everything. Okay. So well, give me one second. It's only 15 seconds. So it'll be very quick. Beautiful. That's oh, great. Yeah. <laughs> and that's nothing. Okay. I'll tell you that. That is nothing. If you, I think uh, there's uh, about 12 plus shows already out on YouTube. Uh, and I'm going to put on uh, the websites. But uh, let me just talk to uh, Suzanne real quick. Uh, you are the creator of the show. Um, how, an, an executive producer and host, uh, along with the ladies, how do you get these ladies to be part of this show? Or who came up with the idea? Maybe it was all of you. Uh, just tell me more about it. Um, and just to give the 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 title is uh, "Lunch with the Ladies: The Living Show." Uh, covers topics of interest to anyone, uh, but with a a slant. Let, to, give me the slant of the show. Okay. Well, uh, um, first, thank you for running that. And first, I have to give a shout out for that music that was done by Shane Curry and Libby Callens. Shane happens to be my son. Um, so he does a lot of music. He's done some scores for me. So I appreciate that you played that. Um, yeah. How the show came about and how the name came about. Well, many years ago, I, I've always been a fan of talk shows. 
And I remember many years ago, I had said to my husband, I want to do a talk show. And my husband and I were, he's like, well, you know, back then I was a mom, just, you know, mom running around and stuff. Now my kids are, are, are grown. And he's like, well, you know, call it something like uh, ladies in the kitchen drinking wine and eating chocolate. And I'm like, oh, that's, that's not a bad idea. We all like to do that. And really kind of th I got more involved. That was before I got really, really involved in the film industry. And then I got more involved and I saw more of behind the scenes because I'm not a film major. I, but I saw more and more of what it takes to make something. And then the pandemic came along. And I'm watching TV and I'm watching this, you know, the TV for news. And I'm just watching a lot of these talk shows because I love talk shows and they're not covering subjects that I frankly care about. You know, I don't really care who's sleeping with whom and no offense to the Kardashians, but I don't care what they're wearing today. And I just thought there was no one giving a message to what I was feeling during this pandemic at my age. Like, what am I going to do? What's going on with the world? So I... I just looked at my contact list and my friend list and I said, who would make a great panel for this? And I chose Ileana and Beth. And then I said, you know, we, we need to balance it out because the whole, the whole, a lot of being someone in middle age, which I hate that term is, it's like things are happening and we don't understand them. So that's why I was like, we need someone young on this show to, to give us the scoop and explain TikTok and all these these other things <laughs> to us. So I always said the, the premise of the show was we'd always have a young person on to, to give us another perspective. And so far, I think it's been really good to hear her perspective on things, although I think Miss Lena is a very unique person. So she and she's very mature. So I don't know if I'm always getting the real young person perspective <laughs> from Miss Lena because she's sitting around talking talking about talking with a bunch of old ladies and enjoying it. <laughs> she is, she is. And I know she only has a few minutes. So what I'm going to do is you set it up real good again. Um, and I wanted to talk to Messalina real quick and then we can all talk uh, that you are the youngest per person in this show. Um, what do you hope, uh, just like Suzanne said, what do you hope for the audience to take on when you are having these conversations as well, uh, learning about maybe things that you didn't know um, and just getting all the this um, empowerment as well? And, and what do you hope to give, I guess, women of a certain age, but maybe your age, right? Well, I guess what I mean, I, I hope to give a different perspective um, as Suzanne asked me to, and I hope that it's can be a positive and welcoming and like open perspective because I think that age is something that can seem so binary and there sh it shouldn't be like just because you're one number or another number does not mean that you can't do something or that you shouldn't wear something or you shouldn't go to a place because I think your personality and who you are should determine what you do and what makes you happy. So I hope that that um, is what comes through when I'm on the show, when I'm talking with ladies of different ages, because to me, that's something that I feel very passionately about. And so I hope that when I'm talking to people of my own age group, that if they haven't thought about things that way, or if they've been like, oh, someone's older like oh that's kind of like what my mom would do that they maybe like check themselves and rethink and think well actually no like anyone could do that and uh i should be more open and welcoming to that too so yeah. that that's my hope um that we can all just be ourselves at any age and enjoy our lives doing what we um what makes us happy Thank you so much for yeah. that. You are 100% right. And look at this. It's 7.59. So mm -hmm. you can leave anytime. Uh, you know, uh, I know you have a, a little baby. So congratulations again. I know yeah. uh, he's uh, under a, a one year, right? Wow. Yeah, okay. he's nine months. Nine months. So definitely. Uh, thank you so much for being here. Um, you can leave any time. And then I'll, I'll still talk with the ladies for maybe another 15 minutes, if that's okay. And then we'll learn more about the show. Okay. Uh, Thank you well, so thank much. You. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. It's been wonderful being on and have a great evening, everyone. No, you thank too. you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Perfect, Suzanne. So so I will um now let Desiree uh, ask all the other questions because I talk a lot. <laughs> you know, okay. I always, uh, and I kind of just leave her, you know, we balance time. out. That's all. we balance <laughs> out. But uh, uh, go ahead, Desiree. I know we had a couple questions here, and then we'll sort of bring it back to Suzanne um, and just mm -hmm. talk more about the show. Yeah, for Ileana, as a producer of The Libby Show, what attracted you the most to being part of this show? 
Well, the first one I have to be honest with Suzanne, because mm-hmm. she's such a mo, such a champion for women, and I just knew I needed to do something. So I just jumped on board. If she said, oh, we're going to be jumping off cliffs, I would have been like, all right, let's do it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that, but then this oh, guy you- is so it, it's so ahead, unique. And she's so, it's so unique. She's so right that there really isn't anything out there really geared for our demographic. So I thought this was really a brilliant idea. And I thought anything that I can do to help push that along and to guide it and And to be a part of it, I was all in. And here I am. Yeah, that's That's great. great. That's great. Uh, Same thing with you, Beth. Uh, We'll we'll ask that question and then I'll ask another question after that. Uh, So just what what got you um, interested? And I know I've seen some stuff that you have done before with Suzanne. Some, uh, you know, uh, so maybe tag your fans of Hallmark. So uh, maybe we can talk a little bit about (laughs) that. So I think Suzanne and I are really twins separated at birth. There's so many things that um, we experience the same way as children and things we just really um, enjoy as adults, um, including Hallmark movies, including 1970s shows, rom-coms. Um, I really, I've had the pleasure of and the honor to um, submit some articles to Susie Behind the Scenes, which is Suzanne's um, platform for uh, entertainment. Um, and she's welcomed me to submit stories, and those were just great. Um, and like Ileana said, if Suzanne called and said, yes, we're going to go, you know, free base jumping, I'll go, okay. It was <laughs> I would never say that. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were going to do that. Um, and I thought it was also a great, a great show, an untapped uh, area that was not yet being addressed. Uh, and that there's just truly an audience for it. And, and interestingly mm-hmm. enough, when we started all this during COVID, um, and I think what people, especially, everything everybody missed, but I think people of our age missed, is getting together with your friends, sitting down, having some coffee, talking about where are we, what are we doing now? Um, and that's what we created. We created it when there was no opportunity to do that anymore. So it, in a way, it was the perfect time. That's perfect. That was actually the, the next question I had that you did it during, uh, you know, the lockdown. So you, you said it perfectly. Uh, so it kind of brings me to um, Suzanne. Just uh, so tell us what a living is and sort of how the show is formatted for people who maybe haven't seen it or maybe someone who wants to check it out after this. Sure. Well, um, I came up with the name Libby. Libby is an act. I wanted to, I wanted a name for women in their middle age or women of a certain age, and I couldn't think of anyone. So I decided I'll just make one. So I'm, I toyed around, I brainstormed and I, Libby is an acronym for ladies living in their best years. And it just Mm -hmm. came out to be Libby. I kind of liked that. I said, let me throw it against the wall, see if it sticks. I'm still hoping it sticks. I mean, we're on YouTube now. We're coming to iWoman TV and some other platforms. Um, But, you know, I I really do believe that we need to be empowered at this age, especially during the pandemic. It was, um, you know, very difficult to wake up and and get your your groove back. Mm -hmm. So I really hope that this show helps people get their groove back. And we don't just, it's not just us talking. Um, we, we're having lunch, but we're always so busy talking, we forget to eat. Um, we have, um, you know, we have connections. I, I have a lot of people that I know. So we've had um, lots of daytime stars. We've had Trent Dawson on, Katie McLean, who you'll see her on Days of Our Lives coming up in June. Um, we have a whole show, uh, Alicia, uh, this um, soap, online soap series, Tainted Dreams. Um, that I'm a producer on that. So we have like four of our cast members, Michael Lowry, um, Alicia Minshew, Terry Ivins, and um, Austin Peck. We have them coming on. We have some Hallmark actors coming on. So we're not just ladies sitting around talking about what we're doing. I really want to hear this perspective of other people. Today, I can tell you that Ileana and Beth and myself were all standing very straight with our posture. Today, we had three guests. Um, we had a Tony Award winning actress, Tony, Tony Pinkins. We had a um, award winning filmmaker, Sarah Maker, Megan Thomas. And we had the mother, the 91 year old mother of the creator of The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. Her oh, name is wow. Megan Sherman. And she came on and we're all straight today because one of the <laughs> things I like to ask older ladies is what's your secret to longevity? 
And Maven talked about ballet and ballet is posture. So like all of us were on screen trying to be as straight as we could. So it's little things like that, because to me, talking to someone that's 91 and still vibrant, and she said another key to her longevity was just every day doing something else or finding what else she wanted to do. And most of the time it was something creative. That inspires me. And I think these days, everybody needs inspiration but i think even more so women over 50 need some kind of inspiration no yeah you are right i mean i i wish uh you know my parents were able to have this as well you know when they were you know in that age uh my my mom is in their in her 70s you know and she would have just loved to see this on TV, you know, like it wasn't there when she was growing up. Uh, so it is, uh, it's really nice to be able to see that. So um, uh, just a question for all of you, then what do you, um, what is the future of the show? What do you see right now? Like we said, we make things happen. We do it online. We do what we can to get the, the message across. But what do you hope, let's say, you know, a big producer came and said, I want to make your show. Like, what do you want uh, to preserve? still even if it makes it big or what do you want to explore do you want I put you on the spot I, I want, whoever wants to uh to do that maybe <laughs> it's a personal thing that you want to uh achieve or maybe it's more for the for the show itself i'll start i'd like us to be sitting in the same room <laughs> which has not been possible yet <laughs> Um, it's provided a lot of flexibility for us, but it would be great if we could all sit in the same room um, and have this conversation face to face instead of virtual face to face. Right. Yeah. yeah. That is very important. That face to face, right? That networking. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the How about you? ability to reach a bigger audience, to reach more of those women that we want to reach, to be able to tell these stories and to educate. Because it's not just about having a bunch of women come on and banter and have a couple of guests on. It's also about educating and sharing experiences. You know, maybe one day we have somebody that's going to talk about women's health, which actually we did. Maybe another time it's we have somebody who's going to come on and talk about women investing and being a bit bit more financially mindful because it's an important thing at every age. Uh, maybe it's about what to do now that you're an empty nester, what to do if now you're divorced, what to do if now you became a widow. So these are all topics that are really critical and wonderful for women of a certain age. And nobody talks about them. Nobody really has tools for us. You know, you have to go digging for that. And so if we had the means, we could really reach more people and be able to bring these stories and, and these tools to these women. Yeah. Yeah, and what I like about uh, the show, I mean, I edit it, so I see, and I see, and I see, and I watch, and I watch, and I watch, but there's always a message. You know, I really do like that, uh, because at the end, you know, I I edit stuff, right, and I want to uh, make sure that what I edit has a purpose, right, and I always have that when I'm editing this, you know, uh, just to make sure that your point is getting across. Um, I know that... Um, at least one um, of the episodes uh, made it to a film festival and it was about, uh, you know, Dr. Ko, I believe uh, her name, if I'm not mistaken, just, um, and the message she was giving was very, very powerful. Um, Maybe you can talk a little bit about that episode and just what what it did uh, for you. Sure. Well, we, we've been in three film festivals so far. Since my background is in film, I, I, I know that this was this was perfect for when they're looking for web new media or something like that. So we were in the New York Online Shorts Festival, the Gold Standard Arts Festival in New York City, which is a brand new festival started by my dear friend, Kate Agentis, an extremely talented filmmaker over 50. Uh, she started this festival for creatives over 50, and we were in the Ridgewood Guild International Festival with our episode for Dr. Ko. Um, But getting back, Liz, to what you were saying about purpose. So I'm very mission driven. And to me, this is a mission to provide a service and to empower women. So it's not just doing a show. And when you're talking about future plans, yes, I would like to keep the show running. I am always looking to get 
to reach a different audience, whether it's through different platforms or different social social media platforms, different channels. But it's also to build a movement. And in the future, I'd like to do a little more of that, maybe have some events where the women get together, maybe raise some money. We always do charity shout outs on the show. So maybe something where we could start giving money back, you know, kind of a little bit like Oprah. I always, I always, you know, um, admired Oprah and Ellen for how much they give back. And I know those are grandiose dreams, but again, it's, I want it not just to be a show, but more like a Libby movement. If, if that would be my dream. I like that. I like that. I think, I think you will make it happen. Uh, and again, you are doing it as an independent filmmaker, as an independent television uh, producer. Um, so what um, I, I I'm gonna go. I, I know we had at least one uh, or two questions, yeah. uh, right, online. So we're gonna uh, talk about that, and then I always ask at the end because I know you had a long day today. Uh, you know, recording some shows. Um, I, I always ask one question to all of our. Uh, actually, I'm gonna let Desiree ask. That <laughs> let me just go through this through this um, here. I have somebody, uh, ladies. What podcast do you listen to on your days off? Uh, maybe something that uh, you like uh, besides uh, the Libby show, uh, which is not a podcast, guys. Okay, this is this is a talk show. Uh, so make sure um, you let them know something that can inspire that you're watching right now. I mean, listening to. Um, I'm going to give a plug. I am a producer on a podcast. It's called Around the Sun. We have some great actors in it, oh, but it's cool. not. Aside from that podcast, um, I really I listen to political podcasts. Okay. I'm not going to say which kind, but it's, that's what that's I That's all right. To. Perfect. How about you, uh, Ileana? Uh, listen to that really is just, I think, wonderful. It's the moment with uh, Brian Kopelman. And Brian Kopelman is a filmmaker, but he's also one of the creators and writers of the show Billions on Showtime. And now he has another show, uh, Super Pumped, also on Showtime. And he just has amazing guests from writers to authors, just amazing, amazing guests. It could be a basketball player, people that are doing amazing things and that have incredible history and really mm -hmm. wonderful, wonderful uh, moderator. Very cool. Nice. How about you, Beth? Just recently, I've been um, listening almost every day to podcasts uh, that are produced by NPR in This American Life. Um, they're very interesting. They're usually uh, narrated by um, and moderated by, um, I think it's Ira Glass, um, but they're very good. Um, things I keep wondering, how come I didn't know about this? And I'm sure that's the whole point. And now I do. Very cool. Great. Very cool. Uh, let's see. We already said what your future plans are. Um, uh, let's see. And probably where they can watch the show. Mm -hmm. Well, here's for everyone. Who was your favorite guest on the show so far? Oh, that's a good one. Uh, Without, you know, like, or maybe like the favorite show. I'm going to jump out and say that today talking to Maven Sherman at 91 was, uh, that's going to be one of my favorite shows. Very cool. Very good. I was going to say the same thing. <laughs> I, I, I just, I couldn't believe it when she said she was. You must watch the show because you won't believe it either. Yeah, she's truly inspiring. A delight and inspiring beyond belief. Yeah. yeah. Well, that very cool. That brings us yeah. to where can people watch the show? I know we have the YouTube and uh, iWoman TV, but uh, I want to make sure that we have um, anything or anywhere where they can watch just so I can put it on, on here on the site. Those are the two places. Um, also, the Facebook page of Behind the Scenes, where post, we post every episode. And on Susie Behind the Scenes, there's a drop down menu. You can watch it on, you can find it on that too, as well. Okay. So if they go to your website here, they will find probably just the link to, to the uh, YouTube uh, in um, just where they can watch it, correct? Yeah, they're not all up on that site, but they are all up on YouTube, and that would be the mm -hmm. Libby Show Lunch with the Ladies. Really easy to find. Very cool. Nice. Very cool. All right, uh, Desiree, do you have any more <laughs> questions before uh, we wrap it up? Because it's been a long day for for these girls. Um, uh, no, I mean, I think you know, you ladies said that you 
did the show during COVID and started the show during COVID, what were the advantages and disadvantages of making the show happen? Any challenges? I mean, it all sounds wonderful, but I'm sure there were challenges that you had to face when uh, creating the show. Ladies of a certain age having to do technology. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> oh. That's if I could point. high five you through the screen, I would. But I remember the <laughs> first time I had to get on Zoom and now I I can Zoom Zoom, which Zoom isn't we all know Zoom is something else. Zoom was a it was TV, a TV show. show that you and I watched. <laughs> yes. And now it's something else. So definitely the technology. And also the um energy because still seeing people on screen is not the same energy as seeing them in person and i was really hoping that this summer i i do plan on doing i was telling the the, the co-host i would do like to do some outdoor shows mm -hmm. this summer maybe with a little audience um oh, because be before the next wave comes yeah. right yeah. Hopefully not. uh th that's great um did everybody answer the question yes right we did yeah. i i want to add we didn't we had never all met in person um actually when the show started and so the first two shows we had to establish a rapport mm. in, in our own separate spaces and mm -hmm. i think it took a little probably longer than it would have had we all been around the same table and i think the first time we were all together actually was last summer um Messalina was in a show and we all mm. attended and we said oh that's wow. what you look like in real life <laughs> Very cool. Yeah, they didn't know. We, they, they didn't, the only person that knew everybody was me. Exactly. And, oh, wow. and we, wow. we also we also have co-hosts that come on, guest co-hosts. And I also want to say we're starting a new segment for anyone listening. It's called the Libby Tip. If you have something that after you're a woman of a certain age and you've learned a great way to organize your kids' old paintings <laughs> or or how to clean something out or a way to put your makeup on that makes you look better than you you know ever expected or a trip you went to or a book you read one minute two minutes do it on your phone landscape and send it to us oh, info yeah. at wip info at wiprnproducing.com and i will if, if we like it we'll put it up on the show nice L let me uh hear that email address and then oh one second and sure. then uh one second and then i'll put it on this site so what was the uh, email again it's info at wi pr and the word spelled out okay producing.com producing okay that way they can say you uh, make sure that i spell that right oh is that WI, right? Yep. Okay. Yep. Perfect. All right. Yeah. So they can send you tips there. Uh, just uh, anything uh, like beauty tips, uh, beauty tips, or if there's something, if you have a pet peeve, it's just something that lets me know that you are a Libby. All right. <laughs> That's very good. Very good. And uh, perfect. Uh, well, ladies, you have uh, donated your time uh, quite a bit. Uh, but we do have one last question for everyone, and it's very short uh, or long, whatever you want to make it. Uh, Desiree, go right ahead. Uh, it's just uh, something that we always ask everyone in the show. Yeah, so if you could tell your younger self any inspiration or any young filmmakers out there, like inspiration, like a little bit of advice of like, what would you tell your younger self? Just do it. I'll, I'll do it first. Just do it. Don't wait. Do Don't it. say it. I'll do it in 10 years. Just do it. Take more chances. Yeah. Take more chances and just do it. That's perfect. Yeah. As easy as it could be. Anyway, you know, anyone that is uh, watching right now. Um, so we will just wrap up. Uh, like, thank you so much for being here. Uh, we really do appreciate you taking the time uh, to be uh, being here and inspiring uh, filmmakers out there, creatives, uh, anyone looking to get into the creative uh, industry. Uh, and uh, we do want to thank um, all of our uh, viewers as well. We usually put our talks on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook. Uh, that way they can watch it. But uh, I have this right close the show. And uh, ladies, thank you so much again for being here. Here and we really do uh, appreciate your time. Thanks yeah, for having thank us, you. Was. Yeah, thank, thank you. you all so much for joining thank us you, for everybody. our Sprint and Talks. Thanks, ladies and our wonderful ladies here. Happy to connect and learn more about their projects. 
and make sure you go out and check out the Libby show. Um, we have great events coming up. So be sure to follow the independent film creative hub on Facebook and Instagram to stay up to date of all that we have going on and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Cause you can see any of our previous talks on there. And we also have a podcast where we put the audio of our previous talks on. So you can listen to it on the go on Spotify and Apple podcasts and the independent film creative hub is for you. It's geared to help filmmakers reach their potential in becoming successful creative artists. And be sure to visit our website, ourcreativehub.com and join our directory. It's free to sign up. Yes. Thank you so much again. And uh, you all have a great night. I'll leave you with the credits and uh, the end cover will have all the information for the Libby show. Thank you so much. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye.